So we're talking about percent composition. You see percent composition in your everyday life in places such as fertilizer at the bottom that 20, 27, 5 is telling you the percentages of different elements in that fertilizer. On the nutrition facts of your food items, you'll see the percent by mass of different food or minerals in your food. You'll see on your clothes like 100% pure wool or 50% cotton. To find percent comp, just like all things, we're going to find the mass of what we're looking for and put it over the total mass. So you write the formula for your compound. In this case, our first example problem is calcium phosphide. Calcium is a plus 2, phosphide or phosphorus is a negative 3. So our correct formula should be Ca3P2. Next, you're going to find the molar mass of the entire compound. Calcium has a molar mass of 40.08 and phosphorus is 30.97. Calcium times 3 and phosphorus times 2 gives you a molar mass of 182.18. And remember your units for molar mass should be grams per mole. Step 3 says divide the total mass of the element whose percent you are looking for by the molar mass of the compound. We're trying to find the percent calcium. So how much of that 182.18 was due to calcium? We get 120.24 because that was 40.08 times 3. And it is a percent, so step four, multiply by 100 to convert it to a percent. For your percents, go ahead and keep them at two decimal places. So in this case, we get 66.00 percent. So the equation that you can use would be mass of the individual atom over the mass of the entire compound times 100. Alright, go ahead and write your formula for potassium dichromate. Restart when you have your equation and molar mass. So your formula for potassium dichromate is K2Cr2O7. The molar mass you should have gotten was 294.20. So we're trying to find the complete percent composition. So we need to find the percent of potassium, chromium, and oxygen. Anytime it's per the complete percent, you're going to find the percents of each of the elements. So potassium we're going to do first. We have 39.10 times 2 gives you 78.12. We're going to put that over the molar mass of the compound, which was 294.20. That gives us 26.58%. Chromium. We have two chromiums at 52 grams per mole each, so that's 104. And again, we're going to have 294.20 on bottom because the molar mass of the compound should stay the same throughout the problem. That gives us 35.35%. And 
finally for oxygen, we're gonna say that we have seven of them, so 16 times seven, which is 112. And on bottom should be 294.2. times 100 and you get 38.07 percent. If you add potassium, chromium, oxygen percents up, you should get 100. Go ahead and pause the video and try this one on your own. Your formula should have been K2O, which gives you a molar mass of 143.10 grams per mole. To find my percent oxygen, I'm going to say that oxygen is 16 over my 143.1 .1 times 100 gives you 11.18%. Go ahead and pause the video and try this one on your own. For your formula, you should have gotten Mg NO3 2 and molar mass, you should have gotten 148.33. Solving this correctly, you should have gotten C, 18.89%. Nitrogen, you have two of them, so that's 28.02 over 148.33 times 100, and that's how you get C. You can also use percent as a conversion factor. These following problems we're going to use solving dimensional analysis. It says how many grams of pure magnesium could be recovered from the breakdown of 49.4 grams of magnesium fluoride? Notice we're starting with grams of magnesium fluoride and we're ending with grams of magnesium. So we're starting and ending with two different substances and they're both grams. So we're going to start with what they gave us, 49.4 grams magnesium fluoride. So grams of magnesium fluoride has to go on the bottom. Because it's already in the unit grams and we're looking for grams, of the same substance, just within the substance, we don't have to convert to moles. We're just going to go straight to grams. So this is just like our percent problem, but instead of multiplying by 100, we're multiplying by the mass they gave us. Because we're going to put our total mass of magnesium fluoride on bottom, and then the mass due to magnesium on top. So in this case, we only had one magnesium, which was 24.31 grams. So it's set up exactly like a percent problem. Top is what you're looking for, bottom is total mass. But instead of multiply by 100, we multiply by 49.4, giving us 19.3 grams of magnesium. And we had three sig figs because that's how many we started with. So this problem, we're starting with 156 grams of chalk, which is calcium carbonate. And we're converting it to grams of calcium. So the same type of problem. You start with your grams of calcium carbonate. The grams calcium carbonate goes on bottom. And grams of calcium on top.
Calcium carbonate has a molar mass of 100.09 grams. 40 of that due to calcium. Multiplying and dividing, you should get 62.79 grams. Four sig figs due to us having four to start with. Go ahead and pause the video and try this last one on your own. So it's similar to the other two problems that we've just done. You start with 45.9 grams iron 3 chloride. You're going to have grams iron 3 chloride on the bottom. And grams iron on top. Iron 3 chloride has a molar mass of 162.2. And iron has a molar mass of 55.85. Multiply and divide, and you get 15.8, because we needed our answer in three sig figs. And that concludes percent composition.